Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So I want to keep moving this thing forward and to that end, I'd like to have it so rather than having the Mickey Mouse a battery in the back and fool around with all that trivia, I'd like to get it to the point where I could just push this button and have it start. So we're going to um, start out by changing the battery. Um, that's a necessity. I think I'm, I'm going to just put a toggle switch here for the time being. You guys are familiar if you short these two together, which is the off position for the switch, right? Green and the black and white that turns off the motor. And if you short the um, red and black together, what that does is it puts power. Um, it makes all the circuitry alive so that the starter button will work and your lights will go on and all that other stuff. It turns on the 12 volt piece of it. So right now um, I have a battery, this little guy charging. I took it off the golf cart, um, the golf cart with the TRX 200 SX motor outside. It seems that I've picked up a few of these bigger guys. I need to get some of the smaller ones for these uh, <laughs> these wannabe all-terrain vehicles. So anyhow, let's get done. Let's get moving on a battery change. So here's the battery change. Not all that hard to do. Right? eight millimeters kind of break them loose with that and in the case of these I don't think they tightened them at all <laughs> um, just spin it out make sure you drop your screwdriver so it rolls underneath Yeah, when it comes to all-terrain vehicle tasks, changing a battery is not difficult. The things you got to watch out for, obviously the biggest thing, is not wiring it backwards. Because if you wire it backwards, you could um, end the electrical system on your all-terrain vehicle forever. And by end, I mean literally smoke <laughs> it will be done you <laughs> and uh, it could get very expensive to replace it I think at the minimum you'll cook your your CD well actually your CDI will survive it runs on AC but you could cook the regulator and when you if you engage the starter and it runs backwards it could jam things up so really work hard at not hooking your battery up backwards by the way the camera I am using is a Samsung HMX F80 um, I my first YouTube camera was one of these and I was very very happy with it and they kept the same serial number and put it on this one the same model number I guess and put it on this one and quite honestly I'm just not very happy with it um, my old one when you flipped open flipped it open the camera would come on instantly this one there's a separate on and off switch which means it's very easy to forget to turn the camera on. The other one seemed to have much better, um, I'm not going to use the word autofocus, but it seemed to clear things up a lot better when, um, when you were moving around. This one, a lot of the jitter gets right through. So I think I'm going to order another Sony camera. I was much happier with that. The new battery is in place, it's just a matter of hooking up the terminals and it looks like everything is faced the same way as was before. I normally start out with the negative terminal, I guess if you 
actually look at some of the books. They say that's the right thing to do. Um, because with, or with the positive terminal rather, because if you kind of slip and hit something metallic and the ground isn't hooked up yet, right? You can't get sparks or anything else, right? Kind of no harm, no foul. All right. It's already always interesting the way you got to kind of twist yourself into position to, to hook these things up. So just tighten this up and the battery swap is done. The rubber band specialized bungee strap that goes from here over that um that is kind of let loose so there's no use worrying about it for the time being probably what i'll do is i'll put a tie wrap around it and that should be enough to hold things on so um i tape these up because it's annoying to be driving around and have it turn itself off and remember this red wire is now at 12 volts so if it touches ground anywhere what it's going to do is blow the fuse so now that i hook those together see that green lights on so i have power to the system and remember i was messing with this and i couldn't couldn't get the starter to engage and when you guys mentioned, oh, on mine, you have to squeeze the brake handle. So the brake handle is squeezed and check that out. We like that. Um, now I ran it out of gas. So it might take a moment or so for the gas to get down there. And choke, choke is there. So I wonder if this thing is gonna start without any starting fluid. And the answer to that question is no. Oh, I smell gas. I hope it's not flooding. There we are. Just a hoodle, do ya? <laughs> By the way, I do have this. No, I had it turned off. Oh, there's what's wrong. Not bad, not bad at all. So it looks like it's gonna idle and so forth. Um, next thing I wanna do is upgrade the ignition system. This has your typical CDI, which is hanging and <laughs> trying to get itself into trouble. I purchased a um, upgraded CDI for this thing. And what that does, it removes the rev limiter and it um, tweaks the curve a little bit, puts, makes the curve a little bit more advanced, which is supposed to give you a little more horsepower, a little bit better to get off the line. So we're gonna install that in one second. So here's the high performance CDI that I picked out, and that's what it looks like. It's a nice little shiny <laughs> silver box. Um, I don't know if this thing is more cosmetic than functional. It does have a green LED on it. I guess that's something to look at. That's what the description is. You can see it came from eBay. By the time you pay tax and postage, you're at about $10. Um, and that's who provided it. And I just ordered these, so they're available. That's what it looks like in the packaging. And you guys know when I buy these things, I typically buy two. Um, and the reason why I do that is some of the stuff from China doesn't work. This is the description of it. 
and you can see what it says this CDI will eliminate the rev limiter which keeps your bike restricted will also reset your ignition advance curve for better acceleration much more than popular orange compact units and it says it'll give you five to ten miles per hour I don't know maybe it will maybe it won't maybe for uh, about ten dollars it's just cosmetic but we're gonna try it out we'll give it a shot uh, you guys also noticed that I got the bike running properly before I bought this thing and I tried this thing um, many times <laughs> there might be something wrong with the all-terrain vehicle dirt bike ATC whatever uh, it's not wise to start adding this stuff into the equation of trying to get it running again it's much better to fix it OEM and then start the updating so how does one change it you push this down and slide the plug out and done and then push it down slide the plug in so we're updated now I got to figure out where to tuck this thing so it doesn't get into trouble I personally do not recommend banging it around too much I'm sure that's not good for it and um, I don't recommend that it gets too much heat you know what for this particular start let's just keep it right where it is you guys remember I put the battery in and we still have the brake handle locked I'm just shooting those two wires together for the ignition and the choke let's turn the choke on seems like the it probably is a little more advanced by the way it kicked back and this thing could also be out of gas I'm gonna throw some gas in it and we'll try it out let's hope we don't have to go back to the OEM one to get it started so we have the aftermarket ignition system in this thing and I had to turn up the idle a little bit. You can see it's got a little of a ta ta ta, you know, almost sounds a little rich. Um, that I can't explain. And you can see I turned the idle up enough, unfortunately, it's pulling a little bit. Make that a lot. So I think it might have done something with the curve. I mean, just a little bit, I'm driving it backwards, I gotta be honest with you. It feels, when I gave it gas, it, oh. Hmm, this is gonna be interesting. Let's see how, uh, let's see how she does. about the same I guess I might have to try it a few times it seems to want to idle at a higher speed but I did turn that up but I might have got a little more out of it we're gonna try not to crash though but that would be a bad day all right difference and uh, the other thing is only one of my front brakes appears to be working it's got a pull yeah it, uh... Uh, let's try to can't get through this 
this way anymore. You know what I'm gonna tell you? I'm gonna tell you for the for the ten bucks. I think that CDI system makes a big enough difference. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to beat Musty One if we're racing, but. It did make a difference. I'll take it. Oh, man. So, I think I'm going to end this video now. I got to decide if I want to upgrade this carburetor or not. I took the first look at it, and I'm not sure if PZ27 will go on this. Um, it looks like the manifold might not work. Um, looks like I might not have enough clearance between the bottom of the PZ27 bowl and the um, and the top of the engine, so to speak, uh, the cylinder, the top of the cylinder, the, the side of, make it the side of the cylinder. This is kind of a um, horizontal engine. So I got to take a look and figure out if that's worth uh, the trouble, making a manifold and all that. Though the little bit I drove it, it seems like a PZ27 might give this thing the extra oomph it needs. So we might be uh, just making this into a racing machine. <laughs> if I up the power too much, though, it'll just blow up, right? It'll just tear up the drive system. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and I want you all to get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.